I guess my question is, why women don't respect our time? This cannot be good. I, when you started by saying, I guess my question is, in my mind, I already started saying, this, this is only going downhill from here. I feel like when they want to do something, it's like, all right, let's go. All right, come, come on. Why are your shoes are on? Da, da, da. But when we want to do things, it's like, here, I'm going to go shoot this little show. This seems very specific, and we're not going to talk about that. Welcome to Guava Jam, by the way. It's coward. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> coward. <laughs> we have returned from our lengthy break. The whole world was on a break, really. It wasn't really a break. By the way, was... happy Christmas and Merry New Year and all that shit. Do we do, we do all of that? I feel like men don't do that. I just wanted to say that so I could feel like we had some time. You know what? Thank you, because you're the one always pushing back on that kind of thing. Way to not say pause or any of that, because knowing you, you might try to pause Happy Holidays. I don't know. Kevin, let me know if I get to pause that. Uh, shout out to Kevin Fox. I didn't know if I need to pause. Merry Christmas. All right. All right. I, I trust a, him implicitly. What a weird allegiance. That man made fried rice. <laughs> He did. He did. <laughs> it was it was such a it was such a spread for a football game. I felt out of place. It was weird. It was weird. It was majority men, and I was like, okay, all right. No, you know what? He that took means? up a plate for me. Like, let me explain what all of that means. Yeah, Kevin Fox is a hunter. Kevin you... Fox is a hunter. All right, <laughs> with the proper tools. <laughs> if that is what you are preparing for your friends. Who watching an NFL game on Christmas Eve? With not a single guy. What are you preparing in the downtime? You know what we was? We was practice. Yeah. Because that meal has either been to... prepared before or will be prepared again. Kevin Fox is a hunter. He, and one of the greatest hunt- Have you ever seen him without a shape up? Selfie game on point. The carry could never. The carry could never. Selfie game on point. Dreads. We giving away too much trade secrets. <laughs> All right. So I want I want to start. So we didn't have an opportunity to do a show last week, but I just need to vent on the entire junk and new experience because mm. we have said many times on on the program that what is the what is the thing that all Bahamians rally around? Like what is our and we listed a few things before. Big bang and junk and new. Bro. Nothing is I, I have to revisit that list because ain't nothing close to Junkanoo. Like no. I, I know I know all of the crowds that were at <laughs> that were mm-hmm. at Big Bang. I know mm-hmm. all of that. There is nothing that engages the Bahamian public and all aspects of Bahamian public, by yeah. the way. From, like across the diaspora. From the people who watch Junkanoo atop the lofts on mm-hmm. Main Street at Greek restaurants to to all the rest of us on the street. Yeah. <laughs> Like j- just say white people. It affects a cross section of Bahamians, and yep. this is the one thing that I saw. Like everyone was rallying around. Did it seem different this time, or maybe that because we more in tune with social media? But everybody was in on this. I think it's fiftieth anniversary. I think it was the whole uh, controversy with the Saxons, allegedly homosexual dancers who they had to. Wait a minute! What you didn't know about this? No, I didn't know. About oh my this. god! It was a whole thing. So um, Cassius Stewart, who's a you just make noise. For I mean, y'all platform him a lot. R- y'all. Well, let me not y'all. say y'all. Sorry. I work on radio, so, beloved. Sorry. As sorry. for me and clean cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We over on the next side. Yeah, but but night. You don't you don't deserve to hit. Get Niggas got garbage on the way. No, we don't. We good. You don't deserve <laughs> to catch them strays. I got you. No, what happened was there was some there was a Saxons practice where they had some effeminate gentlemen. Yes, Saxons and carrying on. But I feel like this has always been exactly. part of the culture. Though I remember seeing this since I was a kid. Who else could do your choreo? Who who else can do your makeup? Me and you can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I don't know. To, I don't know how to beat a face. Period. I, I mean, I just, you know, I, it was right there. It was right there. I didn't say it. It was right there. Didn't say it. Mm-hmm. So apparently they, they were like boycott junk canoe and da da da. Okay. Oh, let me, and I was like beloved. Let's put a pin in that beloved. right here. Nobody is ever going to listen well, to that shit. I don't care what happens. If anything, that probably caused people to rally behind it even yes, more. Yes, one hundred percent. Once you hear drums, nobody gives a shit about any of your socioeconomic issues. It's to the point right now with junk canoe, and I and I don't think I'm I'm capping saying this. I think junk canoe really is the greatest show on earth, boy. I think- honestly, I like. There's there's so much it's from the drums to the horn section. You got like it's too much talent. It's too much. I I I love carnival because it's women shaking ass. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Scantily clad. Yes, but in Which terms is of very important and near and extremely dead important. As a matter of fact, I would say carnival is a two or a one. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But Junkanoo, okay. from a talent perspective, from a cultural, from a you have to dance perspective. Yeah, but this is the only this is the only thing that I think. 
I feel like we have such a divisive culture. This is the only thing that everyone agrees upon. That this yeah. Is, like, literally everyone. Whether you're going out there or not, you can't even escape having junk canoe conversation. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was out there at New Year's. I didn't go Boxing Day, but I went New Year's. And people were shouting across the street mm-hmm. and the beaches at each other. Like, we don't have another monoculture. Mo- you know what this is what? Like how Game of Thrones was for us, mm-hmm. monoculture moments. Yes, this is what it is for the entire Bahamas. What I love about John Kudu is every year, without fail, the narrative is that, oh, some, yeah. is that someone was robbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every year. The fact that there's a chat, they rob us. Like that's the thing that we do to be like, no, my team, I, I'm a Valley boy first. And even I was like, no, we should have we gotten Boxing Day. However. Oh, you, you, you ain't true if you say that. In my heart, in my heart of hearts, I'm like, nah, Saxons. Yeah. Saxon, oh yeah, no, Saxon, but you Saxon fucking put on a show. But you can't say that publicly. Like, that's no. a part of that's a part no. of it. And like when we were talking about sports and why Bahamians don't support certain things, and we talked about Americans being born into and even Europeans born into and ingrained in a culture. Mm-hmm. This is the only thing we have like that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I grew up in the house, like my daddy was always Volley, my mommy was always Saxons. And so you just Oh wow. Yeah, so you just a lot Are they still together, my love? I, I think so, yeah. That explains a lot about Christmas Day. Yeah. She was in the kitchen. And like, the, the, there's a separation of church and state in your yeah, home. Yeah, emo- emotionally, I don't know. Because <laughs> of that, especially around Junkanoo season, emotionally. It's maybe, not tense. Maybe, maybe they start to drift apart. But it's like, so you was born into that knowing that I am going to have a pick a side with mm-hmm. this. It's not like that for anything else. No. For anything else. We, me and Nal were in the car earlier. We and Nal was talking about... Um, I lost my team, took the Colts with, with a terrible with a terrible pass, bad catch. Totally player. Gardner Minshew's fault. At what point did I get emotional? No, not, not at all. I was like, no, you're right. Not at all. We lost. We ain't in it anymore. Yeah, that's fair. If you say to me, the Valley ain't been good in years, I can't say I won't put hands on you. And in a violent way. Like I'm like, we will fight for the first time. You don't have to rush. No. You don't ever have to no. touch a piece of cray paper. No. And you still have all of them same emotional attachments. So Kaizen was out there and we were talking about the experience after New Year's. And he was like, I didn't know people used to get like that for Junkanoo. Yeah, I say, you have no idea. Yeah, yeah, you bro. have no idea how emotional this is. You, These are people that spend like, what, nine months out of the year on this stuff? Now, you know how much like wives who I've met who are like, child, Junkanoo season, I ain't seen him in a month. Like marriages have been broken up. It's and, not. It's not only because of junk. Well, so not not at all. I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> other other valleys were explored that shouldn't have been explored <laughs> from the roots. You know what I mean? And they weren't. And they were one family anymore. No, it's definitely one. Family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the trauma! Laughing at trauma is fun. It's the only way to get through it. It's the only way to get through it. We took this beautiful cultural expression <laughs> while exploring how it divides family. And by the way, dudes be cheating for real. Yo, anyway, anyway, I can talk, I, I talk about the one junk in the group that have, a, that have a separate room. Everything good. Wow, what are you doing right now? Yeah, by the way, off it. and this is going to lead me to my next segue. I am also a, kind of afraid to talk about junk in publicly because of the emotional attachments yeah. to it, right? Mm-hmm. So I actually got asked to be a co-host uh, for for the New Year's Day parade, and I was nice. like, I was like, bro, I can't touch that. Oh, 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 oh we did get everyone job this year. I, I, I was like, I can't touch that. You want no part of that? Something Honestly? else I could do. Sports stuff you want me to go do? I will go up there and I could. I will say everything. I will have nuance. I will have anecdotes. I will have stats. Excellent. Everything off the dome. But you want me to go up there and talk about junk new? These people would kill me. You could invite me to roast. Brave Davis right now. I have five jokes in the clip. In there. Five jokes in the Ready clip. Ready to go. What I ain't gonna do is get on TV because like, you know what? The Saxons didn't look their best. What? <laughs> I will not say <laughs> one thing wrong. And you know what? Not even wrong. You go up there and you have a slight subjective opinion yep. on something you've done in these streets. All I'm, I, I'm gonna be Shannon Sharp in a Cat Williams interview. I'm gonna be on them like, no, you can't say that, man. What you mean? You wildin'. That's crazy. I know. They're good. Everyone good. Love Prodigal Sons. They wasn't even there. Love them. They so good at Junkanoo. Like, I'm not saying nothing egregious. That, I don't even know if that would have gotten you through it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just didn't want to smoke. And I didn't know how afraid I was at that moment until I got asked. Because I was like, oh, no. These people take this way too seriously. Way too look, seriously. Look at what we do. We up here making jokes about shit. That's what we do 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. You can't joke about that with them people. No. What? 
First of all, them people is crazy. I will <laughs> see. Look, <laughs> them, them people is I, no, because I mean like I can't let you get that off. No, but I mean like real Junkanoo people. Oh yeah, 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 I'm a yeah. fine. I I'm talking about like people in the trenches. I'm in the trenches. I'm I was, fine. I was talking to Kenny, and you know, I I just got in contact with him this year. Imagine, imagine <laughs> how Kenny would look at that if we went up there. Making jokes about Diwali. Yeah, I don't know if Kenny would talk to me. Like, it would destroy your relationship forever. Kenny made a statement to me where he was like, I'm at a point in Junkanoo now when niggas can't even talk to me about it because they're not on the level that I'm at with it. And I was like, what does that mean? I saw him on the street and he literally personified that, which you say yes. now. Yes. He was looking at people pensively like, y'all ain't rushing hard enough. <laughs> y'all, y'all wasting my time like I put too much time and effort into this I could have been saving more lives yeah I saved 10 less lives this year because I had to put time into this and that's the joke of it when we talk about this so to Nal's comment about them people I'm not trying to be no not a pejorative no 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 no, no 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 I'm not trying to say that Nal meant that to, to be majorative or to be rude or flippant these are doctors yeah, yeah. lawyers uh, accountants these aren't broke people I think we hear John Kuno and we think, oh, these are a bunch of poor people rushing back in the day. No, these are these are people with money. These people who use their money and give it to other men it's to everyone. paste. Huh? It's everyone. It's it's all of us. That is why. Don't this confuse is, it. This is the greatest monoculture thing it is. we have in our 100%. society. Next election. And it happens twice a year. Twice a year. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. It happens, it happens more, but these are the ones. These mm. are the ones. It happens more, but like Drake said, all that other stuff is practical. Before we get out of this, let me ask you a question. If you were to rush, what would you? What position would you want to play? Would you want to be a drummer, a bella, this, a dancer? What okay, would you want to do? So, so here's the thing. Oh, you waited for this question your whole life. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, the look on your face goes, so, you got like, okay, finally. No. <laughs> because it's funny because we've been having real conversations about this, right? So my nephew, for some reason, and I don't know what Monique then was thinking, but he really, he really want to rush, right? So they got him a drum. You can imagine what that caused. The noise that came with that. That, that what that caused yes. Christmas Day. So yes. he is all intent that, hey, next year he rushing, already invested in it. He got the drum. Boom. Him and Kaizen do everything together. Mm-hmm. So Morgan and Kaizen go into rush. Mm-hmm. I get roped into everything they doing. So now it turns into what we going to do. So, now you're so right now we like kind of junk new free agents, right? Into what we're going to do. <laughs> like, no, you got to go to the Valley though. Right. Like, yeah, well, I, don't, the I don't know about that. Right? You got to go to the Valley. Well, I still have a mother who I, would be against can, that can, so much. You can this shit. I, oh, fuck. I, I can't. I can't. Louise, How am I supposed to go against God her? damn it. I can't go against No, how I feel about Louise. I, so what am I going to do? Damn it, Louise. So, so we got we got that in play, right? So the next step is, all right, yeah, Morgan could be on the drums. Guys can just do whatever. But what am I going to do? So immediately, my first thought was, well, what can make for the best pictures, right? And I feel you like- You be a marshal. I feel, no. Never. I feel like for me, my first thought was, well, what can I do in the least amount of clothing possible that'll make for a good I literally show? went to say just now, you're going to want, I know you niggas. Yeah. Y'all do something with your shirt off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bell, That's number one. So, right. And then I'm thinking, so for a picture, how how my forearms could look shaking a cowbell. I feel like that could create the best forearm pump. Makes for a great picture. Pause. You Pause. Lift, you lift. You understand Nigga, what a pump I is. understand exactly you what you lift. mean. They don't. Y'all don't lift. Y'all don't, y'all heard forearm pump and thought that was crazy. I know. Yo, shout out to Antoine Snigger. He taught us. He taught us. He taught us. <laughs> he, taught us. <laughs> he taught us what it feels better than. Like, I remember watching Pump and I for the first time, and I was like, it, does it feel better? A little bit. Oh, can it? A little bit. It kind of does. The older you get, and, you, and the more pussy you're fucking like, you know what? It kind of does. Like, I have, I've, I've left the gym and been like, I feel better about myself. Yeah. I've left vagina and been like, there was no reason for me to drive out car lava this felt, evening. I felt, wow, you can load it. I felt, there was no reason for this. I felt worse. I felt worse about myself. But yeah, so I was like, maybe I've settled in on that. But then that's two laps of a lot of work. You were you a gym nigga. You were exercising. And then I'm like, well, that's this, your cardio for the year. this is what you train for. Because here's the thing. I feel like I have to be in the music because I don't want to, you don't want to be like a free dancer way too far ahead you of the music. a free dancer. Is insane. It's too far away from your it's music. Too, it's too gay. It, no, it's not. What are you talking about? It's a little bit gay. It's n- 
Free dancer? You say that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like the co- you're you talking choreography? Or are you no, talking No, not choreography. Oh, you mean I'm just talking about off the shoulder. Off the shoulder. Pardon me. Pardon yes. me. No, you're right. Dying gate. No, 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 no. That, that's no real, I, you got that's me afraid shit. just pardon now me. because pardon somebody could be outside the studio right now, even though this hasn't aired yet. I feel like they know these kind of things. Like they, they, they like the spidey says it's They know when someone talking about Fox. John Canoe who probably shouldn't be. But anyway, so that is what my decision is going to come down to. What is going to create the best possible picture? You got to go, Bella. I'm going a uh, fat gentleman with his shirt off that's very drunk who's clearly having an amazing time. Yeah. And for some reason has the better, better cardio of everyone else. Like 60% of our population. 100%. And that's who I want to be. There's always a, uh, there's always one fat nigga who's just like flaying his arm and he's like doing weird. And, and there's no choreo. There's no plan. That's the best it's thing. It's just the only people chaos. That, the only people that have to be trained to do any of this stuff is obviously the musicians because pff, who could just go there and do that, right? Mm-hmm. Them and the choreographed dancers. Nobody else has to be trained. Funniest part of John Gano was watching Pericracy do his Pericracy shuffle. And I said to myself, this is why Biden got to go. He can never do that. You can't, you can't be prime minister no more, sir. This is my other question. You think he did that for two laps? Are you fucking serious? I, I want to know. I don't know. I mean, he's been doing it for a long time. You looked at that man move his feet a yeah. little bit yeah. faster than normal. Yeah. He called it a dance. And you yeah. was like, two laps? It's a shuffle. <laughs> He's like, yeah. you don't care about joking. That's what he did, and he did it slowly. Like, like they put the camera on him. And he goes, and they were like, ah, the prayer shovel. I'm like, he bent a little bit and then moved his feet slightly. <laughs> That's the shuffle. Can you do it? I'm sorry. Now was not a dancing nigga for the early part of 2000s for y'all to call that a shuffle. Were you not, boy? And were you not? It's amazing that things pass on because if you see how annoying that little boy is, he cannot stand still without fucking dancing. I swear to God. And I, genetics. I, I, I genetics. let him and I'm like, I caused this. I caused this. Y'all don't know. Now I was a dancing ass nigga. You, I used to practice the mirror. Like, like, like what was it? I, no, I, no judgment. I can't dance. I have too fluffy. I need you to see him when we in the gym and he cannot stand still. <laughs> he cannot stand still. That could be Johnson. He, he, no. <laughs> you know? He dark. That, he dark. So I, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I know. That kept him ready. <laughs> you have never been around teenagers. They cannot stand still. You yeah. can have 10 of them in a room right now. At some point, they could just start doing it. They can't stand that, still. Their testosterone is going in. Do you remember me being a teenager, bro? No, not like them. But anyway. We're, where didn't go there. We're, we're going to get off topic. Yeah, so I wonder that, why. That was one monoculture moment, John Canoe is. Another monoculture moment came this week when... I think I don't even think it's too soon to say it. This is going to be the most watched interview of the year. 25 million in three days. Nothing that can happen right now is going to beat this unless... You know what? Let's go with a quick list of things that we think could possibly beat this. I will start with if someone gets an interview with an actual alien. Oh, no, no, no. It can't even just be someone. Joe Rogan probably has to get an interview. I think with Kanye a, could do it with a real alien. I think. I think if Kanye did a long form, I think that that would go crazy. You think a Kanye interview could beat this Cat Williams Shannon Sharp interview? It would matter who the interview is with. Oh yeah, I know. I try. To I don't. Think. The reason why I say I don't think I don't think it would is because that territory's been traversed so much already, mm-hmm. right? Like, what's Kanye going to say that's going to surpass the whole... Maybe last year he would have did numbers, but what's he going to say that's now true. that, no, that you're right. surpass a lot of you're right. stuff? Yes. Yeah, the yeah, Cad yeah. Williams no, 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 stuff no. is kind of fresh for a lot of people. So I don't know what could possibly be... Jay-Z that. and Beyonce would have to no. break up because he was cheating on her with Nia Long. And then that interview Beyonce did with her new nigga... Michael B. Jordan or Pete Davidson would crash the fucking internet. Who's doing the interview? Mm. Also, I feel like you got to throw some white people in there. So something got to happen with Taylor Swift. I have a better one for you. Okay, you let's ready? go. If Taylor Swift starts dating... Lamar Jackson. <laughs> so, I, that's exactly what I want that for him so bad. No. I, I want she I break want, up with Travis Kelt. Let's say the Ravens win the Super Bowl and they break up and she's not she's not Lamar Jackson. I want them as a couple to have a fucking interview with like Diane Sawyer. Like someone just fucking It would destroy white people. It, 
it would de- that would be that would be the ed- that would be the co- the nail in the coffin amongst like white uh, Repu- the Republicans hate her. No, it would be done. They, they, they're, they're talking about this, this fake relationship with the woke Taylor Swift and Kelly. Da, 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 da. Why does care about this shit so much? They care about it so much. Man. They care about this shit so fucking much, bro. But I don't understand. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I hate, so- I hate that we both look at Lamar Jackson because that's the most niggery looking man. No, so and, in- and the blackest name imaginable. <laughs> and my- <laughs> Lamar Jackson. In my mind, I was thinking, um, okay, so he takes away the Chiefs Super Bowl, he takes away mm-hmm. their title, and then he takes away their best player, yeah. Well, not their yeah. best player, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, that that I think that would I think that would crash the internet. That I still don't know if it if it beats Cat Williams though, because like Shannon Sharp didn't really have to do anything. He may have he may have said a paragraph, like uh, like an accumulation of a paragraph of words in a three hour interview. That is what, those are the best kind of interviews yep. when that dude came ready. So we don't even have to give you the we all, notes. We all know what it is. Everyone, everyone knows yeah. what it is, who he was going at, all of that stuff. What was the highlight for you? The highlight for me was, and I, by the way, I, I'm letting women know this right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. Every time we, you start like this. We are going to weaponize that bar he had where he took a sip of his drink and said, you have an unnatural allegiance to losers, and that's not you. The only bar that's, that, that's on par with that is you could not deal with your failures. And where did that bring you? Back to me. This nigga's a comedic supervillain. And much like the Joker, he's a supervillain that we all was rooting for. Yes. Because <laughs> we was all on his side. This is exactly what that, what that interview showed me that Wow, public opinion will always be behind this dude no matter what because mm. they feel like he's so good at his craft. To me, the highlight was everything that he said was funny. Well, most things that he said was funny. But the funniest things to me was poking holes in the things that he said that were a bit ridiculous. Like the amount of books he read. Yeah, they the were fact, lies. The fact that him getting into college at like seven. Seven, seven, seven years old. Him saying he could run a 4 2 four. Hold on, first of all. Did you see? Yes, I did. He ran a four four. No, he did not. First, first of all, no, he did, he did not. not run a four four seven. No, he did not. Y'all, they showed him running, and then you showed a timer. <laughs> That's I. Now I can make a video of me right now running down this road, and then do set time to four one, and be like, "That's how fast Andrew was." He is. I don't care how funny he is. He is not as fast as Randy Moss. No, he is not. Peak By the way, Randy Moss his fast. form was insane. <laughs> And that's how I know. His form was insanity. I was like, wait, how is this nigga running right now? Yo. I like, can't stop. Here's the thing. What I learned from that was you can say a, 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 like 70% truth and then pepper in 30% of just absolute fucking bullshit. And people are going to be like, nah, I trust Cat. And this is how, this is how certain people become great at politics in the 21st century. Mm-hmm. This is how certain people become mm-hmm. leader of the free world. Yep. Following this same kind of formula, or a cat following that formula, mm-hmm. vice versa, or whatever. And the, oh, and my my other favorite one was his record in one on one basketball. What was it? Like 92, 92 and 6. <laughs> First of all, you're playing against a child. Let's say it's true. That's like you versus Kaizen in wrestling. Why you know the record? <laughs> <laughs> but that like that was that was my favorite part to me all right so i want to get into some actual issues we could discuss about this because beneath all the laughter was mm-hmm. like some real issues in the interview right i feel like what he was talking about and going through in comedy is the same kind of conversation there is in just about every industry we've had this conversation in sports you had it in hip-hop you have it in politics all the time it was basically this person who is authentically good at their craft mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is looking at people that drift more towards commercialization and seen as less authentic and not respecting what they do because you are not quote unquote real enough. I think that Cat, first of all, he's smarter than people think. If you listen to his, I think people think he's really smart though. He's a smart dude. It's I, at the point where I think we're giving him too much credit. I don't think he's 3,000 books smart, read the encyclopedia smart, stole car radios after he was reading in the library for nine hours smart. No. But I think he's smarter than what people perceive. That being said, I think people just want to see someone lose. I think people look, got a little... Kevin Hart hasn't been good in a while, stand-up-wise. Movie-wise, mm-hmm. he's, been, he's been doing his damn thing. Kevin Hart hasn't been good in a while. I think people love to throw rocks at the throne. 
Kevin Hart right now is the best-selling comedian. He makes the most fucking money. Dave Chappelle, you can argue, is the funniest. Bill Burr, Louis C.K., um, John Mulaney. All these, I think, comedians are better than Kevin Hart. Yeah. But Kevin Hart is just the draw. I'm glad you brought up the, the Kevin Hart thing because him uh, going after Kevin Hart, to me, and I, I was talking to Kari about this, and we talked about this a lot in our chat group. This was a lot like Drake and Pusha T to me. 100%. You, yes. You perfect, ask people, example. nine out of ten people are going to say, yeah, Pusha T is a better rapper. Yeah. But in the end, uh, most most people are going to say uh, it. Even if you don't say nine, Andrew, most people are going to say it. I'm not talking about who's a better artist and who's more successful. No, I'm not talking if, about that. If you just talk in bars strictly, people are going to... And even in, in their beef, most people are going to say, Pusha T, yeah, Pusha T won but, that. But... But won. what? But what does it matter though? It doesn't in, matter. In the end, what does it all mean? Kevin Hart's already won. Kevin Hart yeah. has actually transcended stand-up comedy and become such a mogul that all of the stuff that they arguing about does not even matter anymore. Kevin Hart could never do another comedy, uh, another stand-up special again, and he's already won. Same thing with Drake. You could come along and beat Drake in a battle. What does it mean if he's been number one for fifteen years and his spot in history is solidified? Two things. One, I just said to someone this morning, you can't tell me Drake, with all his money, with all his vagina, with all everything that he does, with his clout, the albums, the artists, X, Y, Z, you can't tell me Drake doesn't want respect from the real rappers. Like, the way he moves, the way he acts, how yeah. he gets emotional about Agreed. his legacy, Agreed. he wants that respect from the real niggas. And I think with Kevin Hart, stand-up is similar to rap. You gotta write your own bars. You can't steal jokes. You gotta be able to, so I think, so I think for, for Kevin Hart, even though you're right, I agree with him. He's already winning. But winning winning for us and winning on that, you can't tell me, for example, Jay-Z ain't still a little bit tight about Nas beating him in that battle. He's, he's a billionaire. He's married to fucking know. Beyonce. I don't know, man. I don't know. Because honestly, I, I think of it on the macro level, like, what are we all doing it if, for? If, if Homeboy started doing radio, you know who I mean. Mm -hmm. If Homeboy started doing radio, and people started saying he was better at me than radio, if I was making a million dollars a week, I would have to go on radio every single fucking day. Like, no, the fuck he's not. The boy can't talk. Like, he's stupid. Like, I'm, I'm going to go in. So, like, on, on, on him, I'm, I'm, him, I'm not a nigga. Mm -hmm. No, I can't let you get that bar off. So, like, even though I'm winning, I need to know, because I love what I do. Right. I love what we do here. You can't say you better at me than this. You can't. I think as a man, that's what it is. But I think that's easier for us to say now because we haven't transcended to that megastar type level no, where other done. this other stuff doesn't matter. That's twenty one by seven. We are at the <laughs> lowest. We are at the lowest. Like Lampetard is saying, this is the lowest rung of 100%. showbiz there 100%. is. 100%. We are we are bottom tier. Think about how different it would be if we had enough money where we don't actually have problems. Yeah, but now, again... I get what you're saying about it still being competitive, but how competitive can you be if you've already won the race? I think what you're asking is, how competitive could you be when you know you got like a couple million in the bank, you don't got to worry about bills, you got to worry about nothing else. More than that. You're fine, yeah, you're pulling your ass, X, Y, Z. More than, more than a couple million. Hey, hey, hey. Generational wealth. Yes. That's what it is. Okay. You already have generational wealth. How Are you still going to be concerned with the problems that you had when you were trying to get that? Honestly, for me... You can give me $5 million right now. I'm definitely not quitting my job. I, I, I love doing radio. I, yeah. I, I'm still going to do this. Like, this is good. We're then going to go a step oh, up. Yeah. Like, we go to the next level at that point. I would still be very concerned about, like, no, we got to be better than these niggas. Like, yeah. that, that's my competitive spirit. And you you were competitive. I, yeah. No, I don't mind this nigga I with get, these fucking white teeth. I get talking it. about, like, oh, well, you've already won. You all need to see Nile on the field. No, I'm no, I'm you just, on the football field is a different nigga. I'm just, I'm just saying, I understand. I understand where both of them were. You gotta be from. a killer. I understand, but I think you get to a certain point <laughs> where the killer mentality kind of drifts away from you because that stuff becomes less important. And that's what happens. You have, you have limited bandwidth. We say it about rappers all the time. Oh, I was just having this conversation about Lil Baby when some of his new music came out, and it doesn't sound anything like the hungrier version mm -hmm. of Lil Baby like mm -hmm. four or five years ago when he was on the come up because he already got everything. But so you ain't gonna have that same kind of level of hunger. You ain't gonna have the same kind of go get it. And I think the same thing happens in comedy too. I think that you're proving my point. I feel like Kevin Hart's comedy has, has gone in his stand-up. Let me be clear. Yeah, it's stand-up. His, stand his acting is phenomenal. Do, 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 do your thing. But it's gone into a decline because of success. Yeah. He's suffering from success. But Dave Chappelle ain't gone now. Bill Burr ain't gone now. Cat Williams ain't gone now because they're still 
There's, there has to be that hunger in you. I, I, but I also don't think they do as much as he do, though. I think Ke- Kevin, Kevin Hart as an entity with everything that he does. And it, it, it was much more than obviously just uh, Cat and Kevin Hart because he was going at a whole bunch of people. Went at everyone. A bunch of other people, too. But I, I think the specific issue that he has with Kevin Hart is the commercialization of everything that you do. And his and Cat's big thing was... The they path, had the to, journey. They had to sacrifice right. integrity to get there. Now, I don't know how true... <laughs> we was getting off in groups all week about I this. I don't know how true any of that stuff is. None of us know. Do we think... Do we think that Kevin Hart... And not, not like a spoonful. Oh, jeez. But do we think he sucked like a little bit of penis? I... I I'm not no, speculating No, no I'm, I'm asking. I don't think he did. You don't think... Kevin- I don't know. Even if he did. I, I don't know. I don't know. Can we not associate a person's success with saying that you had to do that? I'm saying that. Okay. I'm asking. You're just asking for this specific thing. Do you? The, if if Harvey Weinstein, yeah, asked Cat William to suck penis, right? And Kevin Hart, we're arguing to your point, mm-hmm. is more successful than Cat Williams. No correlation in success. You can be successful without sucking dick. My question to you is: If Harvey Weinstein asked that of Cat Williams, a right. very ghetto stand-up co- comedian, do you think? What if Kevin Hart wasn't his type? You answered me. Oh, we don't know what his short, type is. Short, black, mm-hmm. funny. Mm, that's a type. I don't know, man. What does it matter if what does it matter if he did or not? Because after that, don't what, you still what have like a name was Kevin Johnson? He changed it to Hart. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what if he changed that shit to Hart? <laughs> And Weinstein probably took it to heart. But I I don't know how true any of that stuff is because if it's one, two things people like, they love drama and they love a good conspiracy theory, right? Charlamagne confirmed it. But don't... He confirmed what? He said He said on the show, he's like, yo, that happens. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's no. directors and producers. No, people gonna, know. Yeah. People yeah. know. There have been people that have just fallen off and then a couple... And then fallen weeks. on. No, they fell off because they refused to fall on. They, yeah. they say no to some things fell and on, then fell on penis when they say no to that then they just kind of disappear <laughs> so like everyone everyone knows that this kind of thing they didn't happens. come into any success <laughs> they didn't get the finish <laughs> their failure was orgasmic or not that's a, that's a hard road because the competition was stiff how much more do you think you have? Are, are you done? They was getting around, not me. <laughs> okay, okay. So, all right. That's that's the Kevin Hart thing. <laughs> he started. He started with going after a group of comedians that didn't have anything to do with. He went after the Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer group. That had nothing to do with the alleged whatever happens behind the scenes in Hollywood. That just seemed like he just didn't like them dudes because they bad comedians. I think I think it's a, well. I, I think he was. Sta- I hate saying this fucking term. I think he was starting on business for Bernie Mac. No, you Mac. like you like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I hate saying on business. But no, um, he um, I think he was defending Bernie Mac. He was, and, t- and apparently the Bernie Mac shit was true. His, Bernie Mac's daughter came out and like confirmed like, yeah, them niggas did not like him. He was Steve Harvey de- actually tried to take his job. He was defending real, was, right, from fake, right. And that's that's what this is. This is just another chapter in that same thing that we always see happen. Trump actually uses the same kind of thing. He does. He gets people he to does. identify with whatever he's saying because he's not quote unquote a politician. Mm-hmm. He's someone real, and everyone in the Washing everyone in Washington is fake. It happens in every single industry, mm-hmm. and people want to side with real, no matter how inauthentic it is. I do it all. The t- listen, I do it on radio. Like on my demographic ain't us. We you don't people like you don't listen to my what fucking. You mean? I, I'm a junk new person. I, I listen to you. <laughs> you. You've been a Bella for two minutes. You've been a shirt. Hypothetical. Bella. Hypothetical. 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 You've been a hypothetical Bella for two minutes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, like I can never go to practice. Like, like, like <laughs> throwing the Bellas off rhythm because you refuse to go to practice and show up with your shirt off. No, I feel, <laughs> and I, a junk new skirt is crazy. I feel like I can. I feel like I can. I, mm. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't want. I don't even want to say I could fake it because uh, right. 
I, I don't. Mm-mm. So no, but like my thing with it is, I lost track. I <laughs> forget the fuck I was. Me, me being a hypothetical Bella was too much. Yo, too much for you to get. I, I went into a whole journey in my mind of a story of you being a Bella, and I, I can't get out of it. Yeah, that's that's fine. But it 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 is all about in inauthenticity and someone being oh, real. That, they just see they just see Cat Williams as more real than any one of these dudes, and so they will take what he says as gospel. Because he's more real than that. I also think they want to dethrone Kevin Hart. I think that people don't like his success. I think people don't like that, you know, Steve, first of all, it's the Steve Harvey but wig you, thing. But you, but you can't, though. It's, the race is called. There's no I, dethroning I Kevin Hart. The only thing that can dethrone him is, him. is if, he was on, if he was on this Epstein list or he's connected to something like that. It has to be something criminal. Him being bad at what he does Actually, is no. not going to dethrone him. Actually, no. He doesn't cheat on his wife, got caught, got remarried. Like, no, but see, that's just... No one on, cares. That's, that's just cheating. I talking about some illegal that's shit. That's just cheating. That's crazy. I, ain't nobody going to jail for cheating. <laughs> the only thing that can dethrone Kevin Hart is like pedophilia. Yeah, that's or what like, I'm saying. It has like to be... beating a woman or something like that. It has that'll, to that'll, that'll well, kill I don't, I don't. And even that... I don't even that. I don't know. What do we talk? I agree. Yeah, that's what he is. Yeah, a whole lot of Joe Rogan red pill type people who would not be against that. Like, I mean, I, I mean, first of all, she was being loud. Right, see, see, see. see. <laughs> no, that's not even. No, that's what Joe Rogan was it up. Me. We ain't even trying to go down that road. Hold on, though. You don't think that what he tried to do after the fact when he was on NBA Unplugged and Perkins fucking called him out and was like, "Yo, you ain't respond to Cat Williams. Mm-hmm. You ain't respond to Cat Williams." Them jokes Cat was getting off was so weak. Yeah. To the point where I was like. They say it, Kev. But they say it, Kev. No, but that's that, that kind of personifies everything there, because it's like he don't have that same will and want to to go get it and and go back and forth with him on that level. Because look at the platform that he's doing it from. This is a deal with the NBA. This is the NBA paying a comedian from Philly to sit there with his friends and watch Philly games. Like that's the level that he at now. Because he possibly could suck penis. You wanted to talk about Giannis and Wimby. I'm trying to be a dick. I should have known we couldn't have this conversation. <laughs> I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying, you know, things happen. I'm just saying he might have. Yeah. I don't know. I just want us to get to the point where we stop. Every- it, it bugging you because you on you, now you on maybe. You was on no. Now you on I know. I no. I was. I'm always on. I don't know. I swear for none of these people. I'm always. <laughs> I'm always on. I don't know. Hey. This is why this is why I like sports because you actually got to be good at that shit. Yeah, you have. Yes. And no matter what, yes, what no I'm matter what position somebody put you in, pa- pause. Uh, what the fuck is going on with you today, <laughs> yo? I don't know. You threw me off, man. I don't know. Stephen Hawking's out here. What are we doing? <laughs> you short on words. <laughs> in sports, you got to be good at what you was doing. <laughs> I don't see these edits. You got me you clipping this right the fuck up. I leaving this shit alone as it is. <laughs> all, all of this is right just like that. Which is what Kat was saying they was doing. <laughs> it's right there. I, I can't I can't even do anything. It's right else. there. I, I can't even do anything. That's else. why they don't like Kat. I can't segue to anything else. But where do you think this goes from here? Because one of the big one of the funniest things is he caused everyone to go in their phones and deliver some kind of weird statement. Where they looking up at the ceiling, looking around, mm. being really unapologetic or ludicrous. No one denied anything. Or ludicrous for some reason, dropping a freestyle. What like, was what is the next step from here? Because obviously, I, now, I don't know when the cat, when cat running the forty was, if that was before this interview mm. or after. But is he going to use this as a launch pad to do more shit? Because I know how the entertainment industry works. They see in all these ridiculous views. Somebody got to try to capitalize and monetize on that. So are people going to try to combat him or you just could try to ride the wave? I think when you got cat and a lot of people have, have cat fucked up, cat ain't broke. That's number one. Number two, cat is an Emmy winner. Like this nigga, he's successful. He's very he was good in it. Very good in Atlanta. Very good on the Boondocks. Very good in a lot of shit that I've seen him in. He he's not I feel like Kevin Hart is Kevin Hart every time you see Kevin Hart play a role. Mm-hmm. He's like the rock. The rock is just gonna have at some point there's gonna be a V-neck. At some point there'll be his shirt off. At some point, there's going to be some inspiring speech that lasts like 10 words. Like, it if you is, want to do John Canoe, we probably could do the same thing. One, 100%. You, you're, you're correct. Same energy. What, it's funny that it's the same energy. <laughs> same energy. <laughs> but um, I feel like Cat is not short on opportunities. I feel like he, he knows his worth. But that being said, he does have a special coming out. 
And I think people go fuck with him more. I think studios are looking at this like, oh yeah. I think studios are looking at this like, okay, it's time for maybe him to have like a feature role right now. So for him to be like the main guy. Let's be clear. These people who actually run in these studios and run in these streaming platforms, they don't care about none of this drama and shit people have going on. Yeah. All they know is Shannon Sharp got how many million views for this in three to four days? Shannon about to eat I off of this. I need a part of this. Shannon about to eat off of this. Shannon about to get Oprah. Like, that's true what Kat said. He about to get some, some killers now. Like, now, this interview single-handedly transitions him into another stratosphere. I want to know who coming next. Who pause, number one. Shannon. Number two, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, like, who do you, after this, who do you get? Who, who, who do you think he should get after this or would get to like, because the next one has to be, it's never, it's not going to be as good as Cat. No. But it's got to be, I know. Just about, it, it goes back to the question we asked earlier. I think from here, the next interview got to be Lamar Jackson and Taylor Swift announcing their relationship. That's it. I'm sorry. That's just funny to me. That's just, it's just because I see he's so niggery. That, that ain't funny to you? Yeah, it's hilarious. Him, him and Taylor Swift, they, he's great friends with Kodak Black. Imagine her hanging around. They look alike. Imagine her hanging around Kodak, uh, Black. Kodak Black and Lamar Jackson, other friends, the way Adele hang around LeBron and Rich Paul them. By the way. How Taylor Swift would do in that environment. First of all, that's a different echelon. Like, yeah, of course. Adele hanging with like, she hanging with like safe Negroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear, hear Taylor Swift on a Kodak track, singing like background, like playing, you know, I, I can't even mimic no, how he can't, talks. You can't do it. It's not going to be as good as your Adele. I know that much. That's 100% true. Yeah, people. I, people, do, a, I, I do a very good Adele. All right. I'm um, a very good white girl. <laughs> really good at that. I know you do. Re- really good at doing white girls. So I've heard. So they've heard. <laughs> and so we have great evidence to support <laughs> this. But, okay, so surprisingly, to transition from all the Cat Williams, Kevin, our stuff, we're going to look for chapter two or whatever happens with that. Surprisingly, Andrew was the one hit me up saying he needed to talk basketball. Yeah, this part, buddy. Which never happens. At all. So just like the rest of social media, the Bucks Spurs game, where you saw the present going up against the future, mm-hmm. took over everyone's timeline, and somehow that got to you. That got into my algorithm, and I was like, first of all, I have been fascinated, pause with Wemby, because like I'm like he, he to me he's like a great Dane. How long is he really gonna like live? <laughs> Cause he, cause he's like he's like what seven two, or taller. He's seven. He's listed as seven four. But Giannis said no, that's not true. He's taller than that. That boy is gonna last two 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 years in the league. And it's hard and give up. like he's watching him play is awkward. Why do we go automatically to he's not going to live? Why can't we just enjoy the greatness and the current spectacle? Why can't we enjoy what human evolution has done to basketball? Because think about what people thirty years ago used to watch on a court and how mind-blowing they would be I agree. watching this. But let's enjoy that instead of saying, oh, he could dead. <laughs> like, what? Like, what? Why? I don't want to have... That is not the place that I thought we was taking this conversation. No, no, no. I, I, I'm fascinated because he's a slim... Shaq, I think, had longevity because he had size on him. No, it looks, it looks weird. It looks when you, weird. When you watch him play... Tripping? No, no, no. When you watch him play, it looks abnormal. Did, Nothing about it looks normal. He did a Euro step to, to the basket from like half court. And I, yes, bro. He was at like the 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 the, the free throw line. He's like, stamp, stamp, huh? I was like, bro, that's not fair. He took a one footed three pointer, <laughs> fading away. It made no sense. Right. It looked. It doesn't look like anything like, you should do in a standardized basketball game. What's funny about watching him is, I think he thinks he's like six. I think he thinks he's my height. That's, yes. Like, because like he'll dunk and like swing on the rim. I'm like, bro, the rim is right there. Not just that. Your feet are this high off the ground because your reach is already at the right. rim. Like you ain't even jumped to like, do Why that. are you swinging? Stop. Stop. <laughs> you ain't even jumped to do that. But the crazy thing about watching this particular game is we thought Giannis was the evolution yeah. of everything. Giannis was the one who, oh, he could get the full length of the floor in two to three steps. Giannis is the one who could Euro step past everybody and mm-hmm. he just dunk in. He got bigger and stronger and seems like the, the, size of him, like the most, unstop- which happened over time, mm-hmm. but he became the most unstoppable force. And then this 19 year old French dude come in here and he was like, well, yeah, I could do that stuff and more. <laughs> which is strange to see. Which, and it's, it was really strange to see. There was a video of him he uh, took a dribble from beyond the three-point line, put it behind his back inexplicably for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and dunked it in like one step. And the camera just panned, and there was a random fan in Milwaukee with his eyes wide open and his mouth dropped like, what did I just see? 
I one of my boys uh, was blessed enough to be on the on the on the floor uh, of one of Wambi's games. He goes, it's like looking at gods play. He says, it's like literally watching gods, like because he says you watch TV and they look like just people. Goes, but when you there, they look like giant titans. Like it, it's the craziest thing. Because I I saw David Robinson was what seven one. Yeah. But David Robinson had size on him. I'm concerned about Wemby breaking a leg or something like that because I feel like he's so he needs to gain weight. Pause. Yeah, but it happens over time. I know if you go look at a picture well, of Jordan too. Jordan, go look at a picture size. of Giannis when he was a rookie. Gian, Giannis wasn't even having American meals yet. Like it, do, it'll happen. Do we think Wemby is safe right now? I'm not going to get in problems because he's with Pop. I think he had to go with Pop. I I want us to take it to a non basketball direction Let's because. Go. The trend that we've been seeing, and we talked about this last part, with what was happening with the number one picks. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, mm-hmm. I wonder if he's more safe because he hasn't been Americanized yet, right? And because he's still riding his French wave, or is America going to completely corrupt him? Because he already, I think he said Vegas is the closest thing to. Oh, he said something. Oh, he said something about Vegas being. Mm-hmm. The height of debauchery, like he yeah. feel like he does no, not good. belong there. No, let him let him stay in that pocket. Yeah, let but him stay in that pocket. But he has not realized yet. Pose. You can have in on all of this debauchery. You know that, right? <laughs> like you know, all of it is there for you. I don't think he's realized that part yet. Also, you and I both know, and let's not let's not play cute on this podcast. We both know the power of an accent. Yeah, we know the power of being a black man with an accent. You know the power of being a black man that's athletic with an accent. So you over there with your... And you're 7-5? Multiply that by 50 because you were the number one pick in the NBA draft. So you got money. You're in the NBA. You're also playing really well and probably about to be a superstar. Your name ringing off. I'm sorry. They don't even have to know it. You are recognizable by one one name. They don't know your first name is Victor. Doesn't matter. I didn't know that. They don't even, they don't even know... I learned know. that just now. They Thank don't you. even know your whole last name. They ain't trying to pronounce it. They just know Wemby. Wemby. I can't say that the platoon of hoes that are coming over that hill. Yeah. He's not going to be able to say no to all of them. And he could He's see, not. He could see them because with his length. It, we're like, I like that one. The one two miles back. Like, that's, that's what he. Me and, you, me, see, me, me and you will never know that level of hoality. You more concerned about how he could fare on the court. I'm more concerned about how he could deal with this. 100%. 100%. Like, Because as we said before, French niggas ain't shit. However, however, who was the dude, the soccer player, who put everything in his mother's name? Oh, he became a, he became a, he gained a cult following from right. this. Right. I don't know his name, but he was a hero. European niggas different. European niggas <laughs> European, are different. European niggas different. European niggas different. And his, what, his father's Nigerian? Has to be. Oh. Oh, it's always Nigerian at some white. Well, Irish if, gal. If you, look, if you look at literally all NBA players in this generation, they daddy Nigerian, any mommy, whatever. So, like, you know them Nigerian. Like, You're not saying damn Greek. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get Jaro in his life. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> them boys straight up Nigerian. In jollof rice. What are you doing? Stop. Stop. There's no tzatziki inside it. Stop. Uh, like, like, come on. So that's that's what it is. I'm, I'm concerned for Wemby, but I, but I think he's going to be all right. Because number one, he's under pop, who, yeah. who we know is a drill sergeant. Number two, I think that European background could save him. I hope so. But he's still a child. I I hope so. As I said, Kaizen to the league and be like, don't fuck these hoes. And I, Kaizen will be like, pardon me? Concerned about him right now. As you should be. I, the boy can't stop moving. <laughs> That'll that'll do it. <laughs> Gotta get the energy out somehow, my boy. <laughs> hey! That's why this. That, that's why they knew the dogs. We we will we'll see y'all next week. <laughs> stay woke and stay away from cat. <laughs>